Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about my faith journey, the next step. So if you saw the one I did last year, there's been some big changes since that one. Just know that both of us were raised in church. I was raised Baptist. We ended up in a four square church for a little bit. We went to Assembly of God. This was growing up. Then when I moved here, then eventually we started going to the Baptist church and then the Nazarene church. I'm 58 years old. I've been a believer all my life. I know all the teachings that we were all taught. A lot of it has been my own searching through the past at least 12 to 15 years, really searching, wondering you know, are we truly walking the faith, walking the walk that the Father wants us to walk? And it was about 12 years ago that we gave up the holidays. Christmas was the most difficult one, being all the family events and stuff that we're usually a part of. So we, that was something that we more slowly started to cut out and just kind of cut back each year. Uh, I think the Christmas tree was probably one of the first things to go. You know, the more we learned about that, and eventually we were finally able just to cut it out completely. And it was very liberating getting rid of those. And I know at that time when we were first starting to kind of flush some of that out, I was still in the Assembly of God Church because I was serving on the worship team. I was a bass player and sometimes a backup drummer. Uh, my son was the drummer, and he still is over there. And even then, I was really feeling led to leave the church, but I loved being part of the worship team. I loved our team. I loved being a part of it with my son. It was really a great experience. I love playing bass and drums. But I just kept feeling these little, like God telling me it was time for me to get out. And even at that time, I remember thinking, aren't there like certain holy days that God set aside in his Old Testament? Because I remember reading about that when I was a teenager and I read through the whole Bible. But these are things that were never taught in church. So I really didn't know anything about them. I found a couple of pastors online that I listened to all the time. I'd listened to several teachings by them every week. And I followed them for a long time. I still highly, highly respect these pastors. But one of them really pre preached against Sabbath keeping and uh, the keeping the feasts, where the other one would keep the Sabbath, but he also would preach against the whole idea of keeping feasts and whatnot. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe we don't need to do that. And so I didn't look into it further. So the funny thing was, here I was being like, okay, you know, I want to get away from the man-made teachings, and yet I was still following man-made teachings rather than just listening, just really buckling down and reading the Word. Now, I did, in that 12-year span, learn a lot, and I have a lot to be thankful for for these different pastors that I was following online. And I kept wondering, is God ever going to lead us back into a fellowship? But there's, you know, there's just nothing that seems to align with our own belief systems here. It was just a lot of prayer and waiting. And, and uh, we start, then we started following a pastor who I don't know that he, that his church has a specific, you know, Baptist or whatever, but it's Reg Kelly out of Missouri. His church is called Liberty Faith Fellowship. He was the one pastor we both really enjoyed listening to together. And so that became our usual Sunday morning. We get up, we listen to that. And keep in mind, too, during this time, we are slowly really trying to work on the fact that, you know, sat Saturday is supposed to be a day of rest. And it's still in the Ten Commandments. Despite what people say, people say we follow the Ten Commandments, but then, you know, we say that, well, Jesus is our Sabbath. We don't have to keep that, even though Scripture doesn't say that we don't have to keep that. It never says that. Yes, we know that Jesus is our Sabbath, but he's and that he is the fulfillment of all this stuff, but it also doesn't say that means we just stop <laughs> keeping these things. And so it was a real struggle trying to understand the the truth on this, listening to all these different voices. Now, having good pastors and teachers is very, very helpful because it leads us in the right direction. But we always need to be reading everything contextually and reading it within the context, not just of the 
of the chapter, not just of the book, but of the Bible as a whole, Old and New Testaments together. This is very important, you know, because we can take something out of context on this side and something out of context on this side, but when you see them together, they all make sense. And so what happened was, as we were listening to Reg Kelly, we had already made these friendships um, that, you know, God brought us together. And these particular friends are kind of heading in this direction. And I remember thinking, oh, man, isn't that dangerous? I wonder if they're doing the right thing. And keep in mind, I was one that every time I'd see another YouTube channel start heading this way, I'd roll my eyes and say, oh, great, there's another one that's been sucked in. But I, there was a lot of good people that follow me that do believe the whole Bible is relevant. Some of them were very rude, and it was those kind of rude people that also sort of pushed me away from going into this direction. But it was the ones that were very loving and caring and that made me think that, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm judging a whole group of people based on a couple of really rude people. And you get people like that no matter what religion you're in, no matter what church you go to. There's always going to be people that think they're better than everyone else. There's always going to be people that are going to be very judgmental of your own personal walk and, you know, tell you you're doing it wrong and they're the only ones that are doing it right. There's always going to be people like that, which their very pride right there tells you that they're not in alignment with God's word because God hates Pride. This is one of the reasons why this topic is a, a scary one for me to approach, though I really desire to share my faith. I'm not ashamed of my faith. I'm not ashamed of what I've learned. But I really hope that that people will take time to listen and understand that um, I'm coming from the uh, an attitude of humility, not of one to tell anyone that they're wrong and they're doing it wrong. I'm just wanting to share my own experience and the good that this has brought about in my life going this way and how my eyes have been open to a lot of things that I never saw before just by reading God's word. So coming back to Reg Kelly, I really love him. Great pastor. I highly recommend him. We really like his Sunday school teachings. And he was doing a series on the feasts just before the fall feasts. And we're like, oh, well, this is interesting. This will be really good to listen and kind of learn about this from someone who's not necessarily into the movement, you know, and we can understand better what the direction our friends are headed. And very good teachings. It really kind of opened our eyes to a few things and made us kind of start to reconsider some stuff. And then as we saw the growth in our friends, because we would spend time with them like twice a month, we would have dinners together. Being able to talk to them face to face and hearing their own testimony and the things that they've learned were what was what really helped open the doors for starting, with, especially with me, to really kind of look into this and pray and ask God to show me through his word what this means to me. How does this apply to me? What does he want me to do? And one of the things my friend told me was, as I first started researching, I did still go to a few teaching uh, channels that I knew were already doing this. One that I trust the most was uh, Zach Bauer from An American Homestead. Some of you may not realize he has a separate channel. He hasn't been putting content on there in a few years now, but it's called uh, it's called Zach Zachary Bauer is the name of his channel, but it's called New to Torah is what is the title of it. Because I know he prefers King James Bible, as do I. That's where I want really wanted to start. And I'd listened to a lot of his, you know, his videos before. And I really liked his point of view on a lot of things and, and the way he presented the information. So I thought, well, I'll start here. I was very, very nervous. I understand I was very scared. He presents a lot of scripture within his, you know, in his videos. So that would give me a place to start where I could do the research on my own. But I was like, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. <laughs> and then, I, you know, I'm, I'm texting my friend and I'm telling her, well, I just learned this and I just learned this and I just learned that. She goes, you know what you need to do? You need to read Deuteronomy 28. I mean, sure, I'll do it. So I'm in the kitchen working and I, I take my cell phone and I've got it to open to Bible Gateway, obviously King James Version, because that's me. I prefer that. And I listened to Deuteronomy 28, and I'm just like kind of stunned. So I went back and listened to it again. And then I went back and listened to it a third time. And I thought, you know, I still have a lot of work I'm doing here in the kitchen. I'm going to listen to the whole 
book. So I started from chapter one and listened to the whole entire book and was just really blown away about what I'd learned. It's like, I've read through this. I've listened to this book before. This is not a first time for me. Why is it now that I'm seeing things I never saw before, hearing things I've never heard before? And just straight from scripture. And it was, that alone was a huge eye opener. During this, it was about a week long thing. You know, uh, Patrick was down helping his dad. And so it was a perfect time for me to really just play all this stuff and listen on my own, you know, just by myself. And uh, listening to the scripture and listen to some different teachings and then go into a few different places and listen to teachings from there. And I have to say, I was terrified. I was so terrified because I was the one that for 12 years, oh, there goes another one being sucked in and, you know, kind of doing this when someone would use Hebrew phrases, you know, and feeling my guard go up and not wanting to be led astray again because I that's why I pulled out of the mainstream churches because I didn't, I wanted just to know what God really wants from us, what he really wants for us. And it still took me a while to come to this point where I was really just seeking scripture and praying and listening. And so as I was getting ready for bed one night, I'm standing in my bedroom and I just start sobbing. I'm sobbing. I had big old tears just falling off my face and I'm standing there just crying out to God because I so desperately want to be on the right track. I don't want to be led astray by false doctrine. But what I kept seeing was how can God's word be wrong? If we say we believe the Bible and we believe the whole Bible, then how can his word be wrong? All these things that we've been taught that this was done away with and this was done away with, these were all things I realized were taken out of context and weren't true. And things were added to the scriptures that the scriptures never said. I was just stunned and shocked. And, you know, but I kept, as I prayed and cried, I just kept feeling the Lord was telling me that you say you believe my word, just believe my word and trust what it says and do away with all the man-made teachings you've been hearing for years. Patrick, when he got home, I was I was really nervous to tell him. I said, I'm, I'm going to just be right up front with you that you know me. I've been pushing this away for 12 years, but here's what happened. And I shared it with him, and he was like, huh. I said, and we're going out to our friends, and it just so happens to be the Feast of Trumpets. It just happened to fall on one of our regular you know, nights that we, we go out to their house. I said, so let's just, let's just go. It's just a matter of showing up. They're going to, you know, blow their trumpets, maybe read some scripture. And it's a good thing. You know, we're, we're trying to work on our walk. And, you know, he's like, okay. He was really a little uncertain at first. But as we talked that night with them, I noticed his, his whole attitude shifted from the time that we first got there to the time that we left. And one of the things that he said, you know what we need to do? We need to start reading through the Bible together from Genesis 1. And I'm like, I agree. And so uh, every night, five chapters a night, we would listen to sometimes more, <laughs> you know, especially when we got to Psalms, because there's a lot of short ones in there. We'd actually have the scripture up on the big screen so we could see it on our TV screen. And then we'd also listen to it. So we're reading and listening at the same time. The Father really started opening our eyes to a lot of things. And I'll admit, there's still some things we're not certain about. We're not sure we understand it all. But we know we're just going to keep plugging through. And uh, at the time I'm shooting this video, we're just about done with the Old Testament. Well, And then we're going to go through the New Testament. And then we're going to go back and start all over and do it again. And knowing that each time we do this, we're going to see more that we didn't see before. I mean, because, we're, again, we were both raised in church. And there was so much that just either never got taught or we never saw in our own reading. And I know why this is, is because when we're reading scripture, we read it with these special glasses that we've been taught to wear as we're reading scripture. And we need to take those off and we need to let the Holy Spirit lead us as we're reading scripture. This is the number one thing I wanted to share. And I do. this is why I do hope that we'll have a chance where Patrick can share this in his own words, is that we've been married for 34 years. But through the years, even though Patrick believed, he really struggled with his faith for a very long time, struggled. 
And this is the first time in the 34 years that we've been married that I've seen him so on fire for God's word and for the Lord and for wanting to be within his will. Just in the past six months, he, we have both changed a lot and our friends and our family are noticing the changes. So this is why I'm sharing this. I want people to hear our own testimony of something, especially being one that just really dug her heels against, uh, kicking against those goads and just saying, nope, 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 don't do it, don't do it. Nope, 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 stop feeding me that stuff. I don't want it. And now here I am embracing it. So the things that are still not understandable, I think that God will show us in time if we really need to know that. But there's things that are quite clear, things that we've all been taught that when you read it within context of it all, you realize that, wow, that was really, that was really wrong what we were taught. And so when we are following what God designed for us all along, you know, we're living within those limits, then there's freedom and there is no bondage. And then when you go, when you're reading the Old Testament and you realize that when God gave all those commandments, they weren't just for the Jews who only make up, they're only the tribe of Judah. And some people more modernly would say they're the tribe of Benjamin, Judah, and some Levites. But that doesn't account for all the rest of the Israelites that, the, that these commands were given to. And that also doesn't account for the mixed multitude that came up out of Egypt with them, which would have included Egyptians and maybe anyone else who was living in Egypt at the time that left with the Israelites. God was very clear that these are for all of you, for the stranger among you, for the sojourner, all of you. And he's very clear. And so I was just like, wow. And then also when you realize, you know, we know this, we know that we've been grafted in. So if we're grafted in, you know, we get adopted into a family, we're going to take on the rules of the household. And so it all just kind of starts to fall together and make sense. And one thing I can definitely say, and though I am going to do a separate video on this about our experience with the feast, we have one more feast to go through at the time I'm shooting this video, and that's Pentecost, that he calls his days. They're not the Jewish holidays. They're not the Israelite ho holidays. They are God's holy days. He, that's what he calls them. And when you start learning about them and you start participating in them, you realize oh my goodness, your eyes just really become open and it becomes so clear why we were supposed to be doing practicing those all along, not the man-made holidays. Because it really shows us who God is. It shows us who our Savior is. Every single one of these holy times points to our Savior and points to that time yet to come. And it is so exciting, and it really strengthens one's faith. Even after Jesus' death and resurrection, they were still keeping the feasts. They were still keeping the Sabbath. This is, and a lot of people use that the Pentecost as, see, they were gathering together on a Sunday. Well, that's because the Pentecost is one of God's holy times, and it always lands on a Sunday, the first day of the week. So they were gathered together on the first day of the week, keeping one of the feasts. That's why they were there in the first place. So it's just like, wow, <laughs> there's no looking back at this point. There's no, there's no going back. A lot, one of the times we were out at our friends and I was sharing my heart with her and I just started sobbing. I said, at this point, there's no going back. You know, I kind of dabbled in it for a while and then, oh no, I got cold feet and backed off. But now we're in it and we're sold out. We're sold out for God's word and what it says. We're sold out for the Lord and for this path that he has us on. And we still have a lot to learn. I'm not saying I understand it all, but I know what it's done in our faith, what it's done in our lives, the growth we've both seen and the and just the changes made for the positive in both of us. And if any of you are still just trying to wrap your head around this, please never, ever, ever feel judgment on my part of it because I know I've been there. You know, I've been there. I've been the one being judged by some really rude people within the movement and also the one kind of judging them back and being like, no, I don't want to hear it. And, and please, you know, this is, this isn't what I've been taught. This is what I've been taught. And I think part of it is we don't want to admit that these people that we highly respect might have it wrong. Um, they might still be good, godly people that really mean well and really want to teach God's word, but maybe they just haven't seen the full truth yet. And I just pray for them. I, I pray that God shows them 
his whole word so that they can then also then start preaching all of the truth rather than just a part of it. I still have these moments where it's like, Lord, am I wrong? Nope, nope. I feel absolute 100% peace in what I'm doing. But I do try to question it because we should question everything. We shouldn't just buy something because somebody we, we respect says it. They Again, they could be very wise, very smart, very uh, biblically sound people that truly love the Lord, but it doesn't mean they have everything right. And any of these teachers, even those that have been doing it for many, many years, uh, some of the ones I prefer are the ones that say, hey, I don't have it all figured out yet either. We're all in the process of learning, which is why Zach calls his channel New to Tour, because he goes, no matter where you're at, we're all new to this. There's all a lot to learn, and we may never, ever have it all figured out. But as long as we're making those strides in, in, on this path that keeps getting more and more narrow, and we keep moving forward and just keep asking God to show us, and we keep reading His Word and trusting Him to show us, that's where we're going to get the most growth and learning done. And so no matter where you are, uh, that that's the, the number one advice I give. Just get firmly grounded in God's word and ha let him show you. There's nothing wrong with listening to other teachers and, and getting little bits of this and that here and there because a lot of times they can direct us where, get us headed in the right direction, but it's there's still a personal responsibility when it comes to learning. And that, this goes for anything. You know, I, I give a lot of things about natural remedies and what, but I still put it on the listener's shoulders now it's your responsibility to find out, is this right for you? Do some deeper research. Maybe some of the things I'm saying are wrong because I've said some things that were inaccurate in the past. And when I find that out, I try to come out and say, hey, I was wrong. And we all, none of us are perfect. None of us have it all figured out on all fronts. We've all got to take a certain amount of personal responsibility to learn on our own instead of always being spoon fed everything. It's just so much easier to do that. I know, I know it's so much easier to be spoon fed, but we still have to take that personal responsibility. And if we really care about ourselves, we really care about our faith, we care, really care about our relationship with the Lord, we will take that harder route of doing the research for ourselves and praying that God shows us his truth, not what Heidi says, not what Zach says, not what whoever else says, what God says. Now, it, those of you who are just kind of dabbling in this and like I wasn't just thinking, um, I'm going to recommend a couple of channels. Uh, Luke Abafi, he's got a the, uh, the Life podcast out. It's a newer channel that he has out. And I highly recommend you go in there because he's been doing interviews with different people. A lot of them are fellow YouTube homesteaders that uh, have some really amazing testimonies. One of my favorites was by Cosmopolitan Cornbread, Constance, and another one, and I've already forgotten her name because I just heard it yesterday at the time that I'm shooting this video. I really, really loved her approach on about talking about humility and loving each other and knowing that we're all in different stages along this walk and we should never be pointing out where people are wrong. We just need to be living the example and walking in where God wants us to go and being a light to others and loving each other and sharing truth with each other, but never condemning. So anyway, go check out that channel, I'll link to down below, and then at least check out those two, especially if you're a lady, you'd probably appreciate those two more coming from a woman's perspective. Um, but there's some guy, some guy interviews in there that are really good as well. <laughs> I do recommend people at least kind of look into it and don't be afraid like I was for so long. Though I do believe God's timing here was for me was perfect. I think there, there was a reason why I needed, it needed to go the way it did and why he brought us into this at this time. And we fit perfectly into the people in Nehemiah chapter eight. Uh, that was so us. <laughs> So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. At least maybe helps you kind of understand where I'm coming from, even if you don't fully agree, and that's fine. You're welcome to share your thoughts and ideas down below as long as you're polite, as long as you don't start calling you know people names or calling me names or telling me I'm slapping Jesus in the face. That will get you removed because 
Um, I think people that behave that way publicly towards other people and treat them rude, they're the ones that are slapping Jesus in the face because they're sending a really bad witness. No matter what branch of Christianity you subscribe to, you give Christians a bad name when you do that. And so I just won't put up with that. So not only because is it rude, it, it, it just, it sets a really poor example. We should be loving each other and wanting to help each other along this walk. And that's a big part of why I'm doing this, why I'm sharing this video. And no, I'll, I'm, I'm not going to make my video, all my channel, all about my faith, but I am going to keep doing videos like this where I share with you because I believe God wants me to still keep being a testimony of what he's been doing in my life. So I've got to do that. It's just what I feel he's called me to do, not to preach, not to teach when it comes to that, just to share what I've learned, just like I do with everything else. So anyway, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.